Hello everyone, this is Liz with AC QuickBooks Training. Today I'm going to show you how to connect your PayPal account into QuickBooks Online. And then I'm going to go over some of the ways QuickBooks records your PayPal transactions. I did this a couple years ago with a client. Um, she had an online store and it just wasn't syncing right. I mean, there was so many mistakes like duplication of transactions or missing transactions and the hold on the uh, uh, transactions that PayPal does was creating a mess in her book. So I decided to enter everything manually. But I want to go back to see how Intuit has updated the PayPal app uh, to sync with QuickBooks. And I want to see um, if it's better. So I'm going to go ahead and um, connect the, my PayPal account and um, we'll go from there. So let's get started. Okay, I created a, a chart of accounts checking account and called it PayPal Bank. And I'm going to go ahead and now connect my PayPal. So I'm going to go to banking, connect, click PayPal. And we have to give permission for QuickBooks to connect with PayPal. So let's do that. And then it's going to ask us to connect to our um, PayPal account. So we want to we want to enter our email address and our credentials. Okay, it says thank you for signing up. So let's go back to into it. And we have a few more steps to go to. So let's click next. See, since I had a PayPal account already in there, it wants to create a second one. I'm just going to click that pencil and then go down and select the one I have. Click save. Click next. And then it's asking when I want to start importing my transactions. I'm going to only do it as of December 1st, but you can go as far as 18 months if you like. I'm going to click save. And click done and let's see how PayPal is connecting with QuickBooks okay let's check it out okay so I'm now in the bank feeds and as you can see it's like you're connecting a checking account um, and it goes through the bank register first, which is a good thing because before it would go into the register directly. So let's click go to register. There's nothing in the register. So we have to go through the bank feeds. I like that. Um, I like that feature that you have to go through the bank feeds before. Like I said, it was going directly into the register. The financials were a mess. So I see here that um, my payments received in PayPal, QuickBooks is creating a sales receipt and a PayPal fee and the net amount. So what I want to do is I want to go over how that affects the financials. Now I can choose a sales receipt, a deposit or a transfer. I'm going to do a sales receipt. If I click details, it should take me to a sales receipt and PayPal automatically has created an item, but you may have your own items and I will show you where you can connect to your own items if you like. But I'm looking at this and I see, um, yeah, it's a sales receipt for um, the customer. So I'm going to save and add this transaction because I want to take a look at the financials and see how QuickBooks is is doing this in the back end. Okay, I want to go into um, the profit and loss. I want to see how it's recording on the profit and loss. Okay, so it's recording good. There's the PayPal sales and the PayPal fees. So that looks good. Now off camera, I, I, I did another transaction um, as a deposit instead of a sales receipt. And as you can see, um, here's the deposit and here's the sales receipt. 
Now let's take a look at the balance sheet because there's something here on the balance sheet that's important that I want to show you. Okay, so here is our PayPal bank account and what I want to show you is how QuickBooks is recording the sales receipt. Now as you can see, this is one sales receipt. It's not, um, there. the other one, the deposit, the one that I recorded as a deposit is not here. It just goes directly into um, the PayPal account. But the sales receipt, it records the expense, the one that's coming out as the undeposited funds uh, source bank account. See, it's not recording as under the PayPal bank account. And if I try to save it under PayPal, it says this transaction has been deposited. So I can't do that. I would have to delete the deposit in order to move this. I mean, it's a whole sequence that QuickBooks does in order, it, in order to record that one sales receipt. So this is what it's doing. And then after it records the sales receipt, it'll record the expense and it'll record the deposit. How it's recording the deposit, which is going to the bank account, it's grabbing the sales receipt, which is also going into the undeposited funds account, and then it's grabbing the PayPal fee from undeposited, undeposited funds account, and it's putting it into PayPal. Um, that's how it's recording um, just one sales transaction. So if you have hundreds and hundreds of transactions, Imagine how your undeposited funds account is going to look like. And if you use this account for your checking account as a middle account before it goes in into uh, your checking account as a deposit, then it might be confusing. You might want to think whether you want to use this app um, for um, PayPal. So this is very important. This is what I wanted to show you as far as how it's being recorded in the back end. Um, the deposit way, it's much easier. It goes directly into um, into PayPal, and, and that's it. It's recorded. Let me go back and show you. But one thing about the deposit way is that when you pull reports like sales report, anything like that, you want to see your annual sales or detail sales, you're not going to be able to if you use the deposit um the deposit way for the deposit transaction in your bank feeds. Let me show you how it looks. So here is, this is a deposit. So you could put who it's from and it's going to the account and it's just doing the total and then minus the sales. So just keep that in mind. And I wanna show you what I mean. If I go into sales, all sales, as you can see, there's only the sales receipt. There's not the deposits. So I can pull reports based off, off of sales receipts for the customer. With deposits, it's a little bit harder to do, but you can see your total sales just in the P&L. Um, I personally still use manual entries for PayPal. Um, I still don't trust the app 100%, but if you, and especially for a online store, I don't do it, but if it's maybe you use PayPal occasionally and it's not really the way you do business, then I would say it's okay to connect PayPal to QuickBooks. It works really well. It works like a, a, a checking account where you have to go through your bank feeds and you know select them, add them or find match or transfer. So it's not so bad um, if you, don't have that many transactions going into PayPal. I would say connect it and make it it'd be so much easier. But for my clients, they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transactions. I still want to go the upload way where you you know you go to file upload. What I want to show you is if you pull this down, you can see um, the PayPal bank account. If you click on the pencil, then click edit settings. You can edit your settings as far as where you want your sales to go. These are the um, products and item services. If you have your own, you can select them. This is what QuickBooks and PayPal 
uh, did on their own in the back end. You can choose your shipping and your discount. And of course, choose the chart of accounts for the PayPal fees. And then you can also sync hold reversal transactions if you like. Um, I would not recommend that. I would probably do those manually um, because that may create a mess. And this is how you adjust the settings. So, and you can also disconnect PayPal from here. And that's what I wanted to show you. Um, if you like this video, please put thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks. And I will see you on the next one.